Here's nine things that I learned in my 20s that I'm going to share with you so you don't do them. Good day. And welcome to episode 59 of the Aaron Wayne podcast. And as soon as I started the podcast intro, my chair, if you're watching on YouTube, I was slowly sliding down. It's a real treat for the YouTube followers. Go ahead, sub, sub, subscri- sub, sub, go ahead and subscribe if you're following along on YouTube. If you're on iTunes, hit it with a review. Um, a lot of people just like keep coming and keep coming and keep listening and keep growing. But uh, the views are going up and the downloads are going up, but the subs ain't going up. The reviews ain't going up. And, you know, I just sunk in my chair for you. You're welcome. So if you want to see that, go to YouTube. So uh, there's a handful of things I learned in my 20s that I'd like to share with you guys. Um, I made a short on this and um, a lot of people responded to that. So I figured I'd go into a bit more depth. Uh, a little bit longer format of that. I actually just recorded like 20 minutes and then I kept looking at the baby monitor. It's 9.30 on a Wednesday evening because that's the only time as a new father, uh, 34, we just had our first kid if it's the first time you're listening to the podcast and um, still trying to be public school teacher, yoga teacher, yoga trainer, uh, podcaster, writer. I'm trying to do all this stuff and what I'm realizing is that I got to do this kind of thing at night and I got to do the other kind of stuff at like five in the morning because my day job, which I love my day job. Being a public school teacher is incredibly enriching. And that's one of the things not on my list of nine. I wish I'd started teaching sooner. I think teaching is a young man's game, young man, young ladies game, young person's game, frankly. And, um, I think that you definitely can get to the latter stages of your career and find joy in it. But I know a lot of teachers are just kind of tired of teaching after 20 years. And I think that it's, uh, I think that it's a young man's game, young person. I say young man, because I happen to be a man. Can't you tell by the sultry sound of my voice and my deep, dark beard, which is starting to turn gray now that I'm a father, but I wish I'd started doing, uh, everything sooner. I got a list of stuff here. And it's going to be cheesy to go through a list. If you've been listening to the podcast for a while, it's usually just free association, extemporaneous thinking on what I've been pondering, what I'm noticing in the world, and from time to time interviewing interesting people. But all of that through an education lens and a yoga philosophy lens. But as this thing gets bigger, I feel as if there's a responsibility to take it a bit more seriously. And so I'm watching all this YouTube stuff, trying to learn how to do this. I uh, really enjoy learning. And something I've been learning is that people have more structure to their podcasts. And um, at least the ones that have high impact. And if I hope to have impact, whether it's in the yoga room, in the classroom, or on the internet, I think that uh, i got to take it a bit more seriously and a bit more structured. So give me some feedback. So... Even if you're not a subscriber, I don't know why the hell you're not subscribing to this thing if you keep listening to it. I, it's like, especially on YouTube, on YouTube, the numbers are embarrassing. It like hurts my feelings. I'm shooting this in 4K, by the way, which do you have any idea how long it takes to render a video in 4K on a MacBook from 2016? I'm doing that for you people so I can put this on YouTube. Just subscribe. It's I, I looked at it this morning. It's like 92% of the people who watch the podcast on YouTube, they stay and watch a significant chunk, but they don't subscribe. I don't get it. I'm on a tangent now. Bring it back. This is why I need the list, right? This is why I got to professionalize this thing. And I stopped using the mic arm. Now I'm using a mic stand because the mic arm kept squeaking. It's driving me crazy. Upgraded the audio can't you tell and it's in 4k come on baby come on now back in the old days that moment right there i would have yelled i would have leaned away from the microphone and i would have yelled something but i can't really yell because the baby's asleep get to the list rico here we go so number one the number one so you have to gesture like this because i'm probably going to cut this up and put it in a different format because I'm learning, I'm going to be, do you, do you have any idea 
how dialed in I am on what's needed for content in 2023. You know, you talk to the young people because I happen to teach the youth. Um, and I also, you know, because as a yoga teacher, I work with a lot of people in their 20s. So I have my ear to the tracks, railroad tracks, of um, does that even work? And how many people have like been run over by a train because they were like, oh, I hear it. And then it's not in front of them. It's behind them. Did that make sense? You know what I'm saying. Um, so I'm tuned in to the extent that someone that's you know 20 years older than my, my English students can be tuned in. Uh, I'm sort of tuned into their culture a little bit. And being a yoga teacher, uh, a little tuned into college culture. Why the hell am I talking about that? Oh, because there's something about millennials. Millennials, which I happen to be, um, realize that they probably should have been trying to make money on the internet 10 years prior. And then they get into their thirties and they're like, let me make money on the internet. And so people are either, um, you know, working in businesses that are making money via apps and the internet. And they're kind of following, um, following the protocol of a business Uh, that they work for, or they're trying to do something like this. And I I don't know. And you know the way that the young people do it? They just dance. They just dance. You know? They dance and they prank each other. And, um, you know, there's a whole culture of people who just eat food on the Internet. Not even really interesting conversation. They just eat food. What the hell is happening to this what has the internet done to us? That's another topic for later. Here's what you should do in your 20s. <laughs> if you want to hear rants on my thoughts on the internet, there are other episodes that you can check out. Uh, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to keep this practical. Keep it useful. When you're in your 20s, here's number one. Back to number one. It feels this is you know I did this in the last podcast, the one that I said at the beginning of this that uh, I ended up scrapping because I was watching the baby monitor the whole time. It feel it does not feel authentic for me to give you a list of different things. It doesn't feel authentic, but that's what people are doing. But should I be doing what people are doing? This is a man falling apart in front of your very eyes. Am I hesitant to do a formatted style podcast because it seems cheesy and Potentially. Let's explore it. Let's just do this. Screw the list. I'll post it in the comments or something. Maybe I'll go over it. Am I hesitant to do a formatted style podcast because it doesn't feel authentic to me? Now, that feels true. That's that's true to me. Now, does it not feel authentic to me because I don't know how to do it yet? That's possible. Does it not feel authentic to me because I got the idea from somebody else? That's definitely true. I don't like being told what to do. I really like learning, but when someone says, hey, this is a successful format, like, there's something that's um, self-destructive about people where, you know, you can learn all this stuff. Like, well, if you do this, you do this, and you do that, you'll be successful. And if you just follow those steps, you probably will be successful. But for people, many people, kind of, you know, maybe if you're like me and you have a sense of like, no, I want, I want to figure it out. Um, that's not necessarily the right way to go about it. Right. So you kind of have to get past your sense of like, I know best when you don't really know best until you figured it out and started doing stuff. So let's do it. You want, Hey, Hey, you want to do the list? Number one, I don't know if I should do it. Now I should just tease it. I've said number one like six times. Maybe I should just tease it and pretend like I'm going to do it. And then, you know, the camera, my memory card only runs on this DSLR, the slur camera for 30 minutes, 29 minutes, 59 seconds. I'm 10 minutes in. Can I stall for another 19? No, let's just do the stupid list, Rico. Um, Number one, relationships that you don't nurture, you will lose. Now, that might sound like a bad thing. Um, And in some instances, it is. Uh, but you know, a lot of the relationships you make in your teens and twenties, they're not the right relationship for you. Friendships, 
romantic relationships. Now, I lucked out. I met my wife when I was 13. She and I started dating, and it was rocky in high school because we were high school students. It became more solidified in college and then, you know, graduated, and, you know, she's the love of my life, mother of my child, and that worked out, but that's not normal. <laughs> uh, she's not normal. I'm not normal. Our relationship isn't normal. It's not average, right? So, um, you know, holding on to a relationship, whether it's a romantic relationship or a friendship, just because you have history together, doesn't seem to necessarily be 100% what you should be up to. And uh, relationships that you don't nurture are going to vanish. Um, and they might dwindle, they might fizzle, they might pop. But, you know, I'd, I have a handful of friends that I keep in relatively close contact with from my high school days, my college days. And those are homies that I can, you know, call, text, see at a wedding, whatever. And we just like pick up immediately. But, you know, one of the fallback, the, the drawbacks of those sorts of friendships is that they think they, you know, you sort of behave like when you met one another, you sort of have this ingrained pattern of this is who Aaron is and this is who this friend is. And you sort of just kind of play out those roles. And if you're the same person you were 14 years ago, that's not good. You should be different. You should be trying to do different things. You should have a different, you know, the core of you stays true. But if you haven't sort of outgrown many of your friendships, then you should probably focus on growing a little bit. Not to say you got to leave people behind, but you kind of do. <laughs> Oh, that was not articulated very well. See, this is the format of podcast thing that I screw up. Number two, if you don't pay attention to your 20s, you will gain weight. There's nothing wrong from a social standpoint, in my perspective, uh, for carrying extra body weight. But there are health stuff that you should be considering and or not. For some reason, that's like a, a controversial thing to say. But for me, I can speak from my experience and my desires and my want for myself. I noticed that I was gaining a lot of weight in my 20s. I got up to about 200 pounds, which for my frame is heavy. And it was because high school, when I was playing football and on the swim team, you, know, you go to the swim team, you wake up at 5.30 in the morning, hit the pool at 6, and then go to school, you're burning cows. And your boy was burning cows, you know, 17, 18 years old, Rico, swimming up in the pool. 6 a.m. Come on, man. I'm burning calories. And as a football player, this is what I would do. I played linebacker. So I, I was trying to gain weight because my body naturally wants to carry about 175. And as a linebacker, like that wasn't the, I also played offensive guard. And if you know anything about football, I'm not an offensive guard, but they put me there because I can't catch. And my goal was to gain weight. So we would go to Wendy's and, I would get like two or three junior bacon cheeseburgers, the JBC, if you know, you know, a couple of chicken nuggies and fries with the salt. Wendy's had the salt where you would like snap and then it would sprinkle like a little bit. It was like, it's like they found this salt at the bottom of the Marianas Trench. Google it if you don't know what that is. It's like this fine, fine salt and you'd sprinkle it on your french fries and then like your mouth would just like I'm salivating just talking about it. It's been 15 years since I've had Wendy's French fries, but I would crush those, dude. And then I go to college, and you know I'd hit the treadmill sometimes, and I'd lift weights sometimes. Most of the time, I was just eating garbage. And then you know you get to be 25, get out of college, um, and you just keep eating like that, and you're not exercising anymore because your social network of people who worked out with you has sort of fallen apart because you're not on team sports anymore. So just that's an awareness to be to notice because there's research on this. I don't have it at hand and I'm not going to take the time to put it in my show notes either because I'm not, I don't have the time. I don't have the time, but you can Google it. Google uh, health habits in your twenties. There's research on how your health habits that you establish in your twenties carry on for the rest of your life uh, on average. So many of the habits that you develop physically and um, dietarily is they're just going to, probably be with you so be mindful of that again no judgment about people's lifestyle choices but for me that's something i noticed in myself number three saving money should be automatic 
you shouldn't even have to think about saving money, especially if you have a regular paycheck. I know X amount of dollars are coming in from my public school teaching job. I know on average from my yoga business, this is my top line. I just save just automatically percentages, throw percentages, like, and have those accounts especially so like it, most people don't own a business most people so that your your income is typically fairly consistent just set an account that automatically goes away now here's a trick that i learned because i made this mistake in my 20s i had a savings account that was attached to my bank account so when i would log into my bank account app if i needed the money or i wanted the money or I just like had the desire i went out t- t- you know too many times that week or whatever i could just drop the money from one account into another there needs to be a little bit of friction in it. And so opening a Roth IRA at a different bank will give you the chance. Cause you can't just like take money out of a Roth IRA. There's re there's like, there's a handful of, um, they're called qualified distributions that you can take out of a Roth, but it's, they're specific and you get penalized if you don't fall, meet those qualifications. So, um, you end up getting taxed on that stuff and you can, face a penalty. I'm not a financial advisor, so Google all this, talk to a bank. But having it at a separate bank created just enough friction that I've been able to save on a very modest income of a public school teacher, uh, me and my wife, and uh, a, what seems to be a sizable amount of money for us just by automating that in our 20s, uh, mid to late 20s is when we did that. Another thing that I'd suggest in your 20s is to learn on purpose. So... You know, watching TED Talks was something, TED Talks came out and I was obsessed with them. I think I've watched like the first, for the first couple of years that TED Talks were blown up on YouTube, I was just like, bam, 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 bam. Like, I think this was college days, so like 2010-ish. And I would just crush TED Talks, learn all of this information, um, probably more than I learned in my $45,000 public, um, not public school, my uh, bachelor's degree, like I probably learned I learned more on the internet than I did in college. And all of that knowledge is interesting to me, but it wasn't really of use. So in conversation, I could sort of share interesting tidbits. But first of all, I couldn't remember the citations. Like I have no idea where I got that information from. It's just in my head. And then the dang on battery is gonna die on my camera. This is this podcast has been absolute chaos. I had to delete the last one because I was distracted by the baby monitor, which I'm not complaining. I love my daughter. I love being a father. I'm so self-conscious about that stuff, about saying things publicly that's in any way. Like, if you're a parent, you know, like, you love your kid. But it's like, man, I was trying to do something. Um, or maybe you don't feel like that. Maybe I'm a terrible person for saying that. But that's, that's how I feel. I have to be honest. Um, so we got to number four, and the battery's about to die. What am I going to do? What do I do about this? Maybe this is a failed experiment from the start, guys. You know, I said on my last podcast, don't wait until tomorrow was the title of that podcast. And the intention of that was, listen, man, you just got to get started back up on this. You had a good thing rolling. You got travel podcasts like Katie and I, like we did travel the country and we did podcasts all in these national parks and it was awesome. And I had a good habit of like getting guests and like all this stuff. And then prepping for the baby, this is the project that sort of fell to the wayside. And now that we're a little bit above water with our scheduling, uh, I wanted to get back into the podcast. And then the last one, I said, I'm going to just record one really quickly to bury it. And I came into it with the intention of being professional and the battery's dying. (laughs) Have I been yelling at you? That's not what I'm trying to do. Learn how to have uncomfortable conversations. Schedule your time in blocks. Don't hesitate. Focus on zone two training. Didn't see that one coming, did you? And be on time. Goodness, be on time. Right error. Did this thing even record? All right. I don't know what just, I don't, I'm just going to, hopefully, hopefully this was Episode 59 of the Aaron Wayne podcast. Oh, and the outro music isn't working. I'm going to have to add that in post. There it goes. But is it recording? What was right error? It's still recording the audio? I have no idea what happened. But I'm going to figure it out. And listen, this is going to be interesting to look back on in five years. 
to see how janky I had this set up. It used to be more professional, but then it just like, like it's just starting back up. Sisyphus, it's a Sisyphusian, Sisyphean proposition. I gotta got start the uh, music again because I took the I took I took too long to outro. I got 30 seconds to outro on this, and I took too long. Listen, guys, I really like doing this. I like that this is growing. My goal is to help build something that can sublimate, supplant, take the place of. It's time. I'm tired. All the negativity that's on the internet. I'm trying to put something out that's useful, that's interesting, that's full of good vibes. So follow, rate, review, subscribe.